Hello everyone, are you working with flows that have a lot of steps? Do you want to make them easier to use? And if that's the case, this video is for you. I will show you in this video how to use the Avoni Progress Indicator, and we will use the Avoni Progress Indicator using a router element. And this will make your progress indicator, your progress bar, for example, uh, clickable. So users will be able to easily go back or move forward to a next step or even jump ahead into the process. So what I'm going to build today, by the end of this video, you will see the Avoni progress bar that have buttons or that will be clickable with steps. So, and clicking on the step will take the user to the right part and clicking on the step will take the user to the right part of the flow. And this is great for forms, onboarding, or anytime users need to move around a specific flow more freely. Okay, let's create a new screen flow from scratch. The first step I need to do here is to create a variable called name. Um, the first step I need to do here is to create a variable called current step. And this variable will track where the user is on our flow. So new resource, variable, current step, type text, step one for the default value, none. Next, we need to create another variable and we are going to create a variable named progress type. And this variable will control the look and feel of our progress indicator component. And setting up this variable will make it super easy for you to change the type of the progress indicator if you want to change that later. And let's say you have multiple progress indicator component into different screen into that screen flow. By changing the default value, it will automatically change uh, all the type for, it will automatically change the type for all the progress indicator that are mapped to this variable. So new resource variable, um, let's name it progress type, text, default value, it's let's say horizontal. Okay, perfect, we have created the variable. Now, on our flow, the first thing I need to do, and I want to do, is to create an action. As you might not know, the Avoni components comes with Avoni actions, and those actions are pretty handy if you like to really specify or simplify your flow building process. Here I'm looking to use a progress indicator step collection. Basically, by using this action, I'm able to define my step collection I will be able to reuse everywhere on that flow where I'd like to link that collection to the step value on the progress indicator. So let's name it step name collection. Let's create the step, the steps. So let's name it step one. You can add icon, subset, action. So that's pretty handy because if you like to change the label, if you like to add new steps, you just need to add the steps once into the action, and this will automatically replicate everywhere you're mapping this action on the step value for the progress indicator. Uh, step three. Okay, just create three steps. Next, you need to click on events and create or manually assign variable. Uh, you, you need to create a new resource. And for that, you need to select variable. Let's say um, steps collection values. Data type, you need to select Apex defined. And you need to select the Apex class from the Avoni components. Uh, the name is the progress indicator step important to allow multiple collect values as a collection. Done and done. Perfect. Next step now, and that's really the key of this flow to work. It's really to set up the router decision. And you can think about the router decision as a traffic controller in our flow. 
it will decide where to send the user based on which step they click. So let me show you how it works. Decision, let's say a router screen, navigate to screen one, resource we select the current step equal to step one. Create a new outcome, navigate to screen two, current step, value step two. It's really important to keep the same value, the same syntax for the value as the one you define in the action at the top as your um, step collection. And then navigate to screen three. Current step equal step three. Okay. So now I set up the router screen decision. And as you can see, I have like three branches where I can add different screen for each. So next step is to build our screen one. So I will take this branch screen. Let's name it screen one. Step one. Let's remove the header and footer. Now let's drag the Avoni progress indicator component. Progress indicator step one, and let's open the component builder. Now for the type, as you can see, you have different type available for the progress indicator. You can decide to select one of those manually, but remember, we created a variable first for the type, name, progress type. So basically I'd like to map the type by this variable progress type. So if I want to change the type, I only need to change the type once directly on the variable, and this will automatically re replicate anywhere I map this value on the component. So now for the current step attribute, I will select map and map the current step to the variable we created first. Okay, next data source. If I want, I can create my data source manually by adding steps manually for this screen, but it's not the best way. Why? Because if you have multiple progress indicator component on all the screens you have into this flow, you need to maintain and create all the steps manually every time. Remember, we created first an action, have any action to create or to define like a collection of steps. So this action will be available from variable. And from there, you can select the step collection value we created as an action. So that's the link to the step collection you can define for the entire flow. OK, sounds good. I just set up the progress indicator on the first screen. Now, if we want, we can add other component into our first screen. Remember, this is really the first screen of the form that is dynamic. So users will be able to click, to click on the progress indicator to go to the next, uh, to go to the next screen, two, three, and in any order they want. So let's drag the uh, maybe uh, text element for this demo text. Okay, uh, this is step one. Uh, okay, well, we're just fine tuning the let's name. Okay, perfect. Done. Okay, we just set up the first screen on the first uh, router decision right there. Next, we need to set up an assignment and we will use an assignment to update our current step variable. So whenever someone is clicking on a step, we will assign that variable. So let's 
select an assignment and let's name it the uh, label assignment step screen one and then for the variable we select current step equal to the progress indicator step one click step value so this assignment will assign the current step to the value of the progress indicator step one element and we can repeat exactly the same process for the screen two and screen three so it would be like repeating process but let me show you okay i'm repeating the process now for the screen two we move this and this okay perfect and now let's drag the progress indicator of any progress indicator component uh, progress indicator not step one but step two open component builder type select the map uh, progress type current step map current step hmm, let's make sure it's saving okay perfect data source variable step collection value okay let's do the same test by dragging a text element this is my screen too okay and let's do the same by creating an assignment assignment step screen two and then current step is equal to the progress indicator step two this time click step value okay same process for the last last screen of my example the progress indicator right there open component builder let's map the type to the progress type and current step map to the current step value variable let's select the variable from the current step uh, the uh, step collection value that's pretty much done let's add for the test some display text so you can imagine not adding a display text because it's really for my tutorial but it's really to drag any other component you'd like to display on that screen Uh, okay okay let's do the assignment now assignment step screen three and for the current step variable equal to the progress indicator step three click step value perfect okay now we need to connect the three screens to the router and remember the router decision this is where everything comes together so we need to connect each screen to the next screen interaction right there connect element right there connect element to the router and connect element to the router so every time user is clicking on a step it will go directly to the router screen however i miss one step on each progress indicator i forgot to set up the interaction so i need to define when they are clicking on the step what you like to do i like to close flow navigation go to the next screen so it will go to the assignment and they go back to the router so that's really important 
to do that for uh, every progress indicator, going on the interaction, tap click, and then flow navigation, go to the next screen on the flow, and the same and the same for the step three, creating an interaction when they are pressing the step flow navigation going to the next screen. OK, perfect. Pretty much done. Let's do a test. Let's save the flow and let's do a debug to see if everything is running properly. OK, so I should be able to click on step two. Oh, it's working fine. I can go from step one to step two. I mean, that's working. Let's get back to the flow. Let's do another thing. What I'm going to do, progress type, instead of setting up variable, let's say, path. Let's see what happened. Debug. So instead of, of having the horizontal progress bar, just by changing the default value on the variable, let's see what happened. Now you have a path. That's cool. That's really cool. OK, let's do one more test, changing to vertical instead. Again, just changing the variable default value. And now we have the vertical variation. We can go from step one to step three to go back to step one. And as you can see, the type is changing automatically everywhere I added or I mapped the variable to the progress indicator type. So that's pretty much what I'd like to show you today for this uh, video tutorial about how to use the Avoni progress indicator with a router to be able for users to navigate from one screen to another one without having to use the standard button from Salesforce. I hope you enjoyed, the, you enjoyed this video. Let me know if you have any question or comment in the comment section below. Thank you so much.